Sorry, I can't. Can you hear me okay? Okay, okay. Um, you my story, Charlotte. Okay. Well, my, as I said before, my granddad, he was Muslim. He was Nigerian. So that was always with me. But growing up, the most of the Muslims that I've seen around the end were... Asian, who now I look back weren't practicing much, so I didn't like what I seen back then. But then when I got to about 16, I'm 27 now, when I got to about 16 I started college and I met some Somali sisters, mashallah, who was serious in their religion, so I used to ask questions, ask questions, and that was about it. And then when I got to about 20, 21, I listened to The Purpose of Life, Khalid Yassin, and and that kind of, that was like the missing piece of the jigsaw. I'm keeping it brief because I don't really want to say too much. Um, so yeah, that was the missing piece, but I still kind of ignored it. And pushed it away because I was thinking, nah, this is not the truth, this, this can't be right. I suppose it was the shaitan because I was still not into certain things. So I moved away, I moved to London for a little bit, and I was still doing what I was doing but then in London subhanAllah Islam was everywhere all the Dao tables and enough Muslims mashallah and then I met another sister who I was working with and I was telling my, telling my son to her and she said you just seem to be stuck in a rock but you know what you need to do and um, I had a good talk with her and after that I came back to Manchester and that's when I took my shahada so that was like three years ago and that was the easy part but since then obviously some things are difficult but alhamdulillah I, I made that choice a few years ago my family all okay came with it they're supportive mm, that's about it any, any questions then ask I don't mind Sorry, can you hear me okay? Okay, before Islam, I wasn't religious at all. I used to go churches though for like weddings and that. 
but was never ever interested in what they had to say. Subhanallah, I don't know why, I just wasn't interested. And when I used to see Jesus on the cross, my, I could never accept it. So I didn't like it. So the only thing I'd do when I was in church was just steal the biscuits. That's what I used to take the biscuits. That was it. So I wasn't into any other religion. Subhanallah, I know that was bad. No, not even Catholic. My dad, if you ask him, he'll say he's Catholic. Um, but we were nothing. We were not brought up with any religion. Like I said to you, Islam was always there around me. And my my granddad, he was a Muslim, so I was aware of Islam. And I kind of accepted that from when I was young. Is there any more questions? Well, the two years previously to my taking the Shahada, I was in London. No, it was hard, it was hard, it was hard. Because the friends I had before I moved away, and we kind of drifted apart. So I was changing. But definitely when I came back to Manchester, I took my Shahada. I didn't want them old friends because I knew if I had them around me, it would have been hard. It would have been difficult for me to practice because obviously the people I was brought up with were they were led by the shaitan so I didn't want to be around that but it was hard making new friends because I was on my own I didn't know where to go um, Manchester where I live is not is not um, it wasn't really active in the dawah I didn't know where to go, to be honest, and then I went to one talk on my own. I got a little bit brave. And then in Mashallah, I met some beautiful sisters there. And so from then, they kind of like took me under their wing and got got around talks and mashed and met more people. So I looked through my phone now and, and I just have Muslim as just sisters in my phone and I thought that, that would have been a never. Kind of that. Allah, Allah helps it. Allah. In the Khalid Yassin video, it was actually one thing that I knew. He told me to download it and listen to it, The Purpose of Life. Um, so I did. Yes, and he, he, he actually told me to download it for his sister. So I was thinking, what's all this about? Let me listen to it. Well, I, when I listened to it, all I done was cry. I just cried. I remember being in the study where the computer was listening to it. My head was in my hands and I was just crying, crying, crying. Because it was... It was like I said, the missing piece of the jigsaw. It was just felt so true, but I was kind of scared of it. Thinking that it's too good to be true. So from that point, from taking the Shahada, it's done with like an itch. You know, you have an itch on your arm and it more you eat it, it won't go away, it's still there. That's what Islam was like, so I just had to accept it. I had to accept Islam. I'm the I did. I think it was the purpose of life number two. I think there were like three missing, but that was number two. The one that I listened to. Any more questions? Did you feel like you had one more thing to go to your help? No, like I said, when I when I came here, I was I was on my own, and for for a good few months, I didn't know where to go, and but then obviously I said that I went to hotel and met some sisters there. But changing my lifestyle from before, it was kind of gradual because from when I realized if that was the truth, I kind of I kind of slowed down my pace, the things that I was doing. So when I took my shahada, I was kind of like prepared, the no drinking, no raving, no mixing. So it was I kind of found those, that that part easier. 
what do I try to have for people who are struggling to find the truth? Definitely I would say listen to the papers of life. It's not Kelly guessing me someone that I don't really listen to now. Marshall is very good with what he was doing and that DVD or the, the audio is probably the best for people because I know a lot of people that I've spoke to listen to that and accept the sound from listening to to the papers of life. So even now I'll give those those CDs to people. Did it answer that okay? Anything else? My son went, um, no, they wasn't happy at the beginning. They hated it for what they seen in the media. Oh, about them. Okay, my family, um, my mum and dad both grew up, was born and brought up in Manchester. Typical middle class family, live on an estate. Um, just, I don't know, subhanallah. How can I explain them? Not religious. Um, my dad's in his Catholic book, he doesn't really practice. Um, my family. Oh, how they took it. No, they didn't like it at the beginning. Obviously, what they see on the media, on the TV, and in the newspapers is not. They don't see anything good about Islam. It's just bad things that they see about Muslims and the religion. So, no, they didn't like it. And I understood that. So, I tried to be the best to them. Um, best in character, help them, clean, cook, do more than I've ever done for them, just to show that, that Islam has not changed me, except make me better. It's not changed me for the worse. And the more time I've then met my friends, they realise what my friends are like. And we're not like what they see. And I was just explaining that to them earlier on today, we had a good discussion about mashallah. Now they're fine. I'm going to laugh, much of that. My mum is very supportive. And my dad is as well. Which makes it easier on me. Because I was hiding things from them at the beginning. Hiding my little books, hiding my hijab, hiding certain things. But now, it's fine, they're cool. Did my life get better all the way? Um, my life got better. Yeah, it was a good question, my my, my life got better. So, some things were difficult, but in just better. It was better because... Thank you.